All right, whenever you're ready. My name is Santosh Mahapatra, and my topic is advancing mechanisms in data center networks. Like, with the increase in demands of the IT services, the data centers are coming more and more, it's becoming popular, and the de facto technology for managing the IT infrastructure for most of the companies. So, and it typically houses hundreds of thousands of servers. And what it has been observed that this 50 percent of the cost is actually coming from the cost of the servers. So utilizing the communication is the utilizing the technology is a key to like utilization the entire infrastructure. So and one key property is the agility. Like means we should be able to assign any service to any server and on change in the demand, we should be able to like this dedicate more servers to a particular service without making any like big change in terms of the administrative processes. Like we said, administrators do not should not be like they should not be involved in like reconfiguring the things and then deploy it. So it should be as easy as possible. So we need some kind of layer to semantics like this we plug in and it starts running. So yeah. This is the topology for a traditional data center networks where we have this servers, this stack then a like a rack. Then we have the top of the rack switches, which are aggregated at this level, which is called the aggregate servers, or the switches, sorry, the aggregate switches. So they are even combined to this access routers. And this bridge routers are the, basically the gateway between the internet and the data centers. So this is a typical data center topology. Uh, we got this data from the Cisco site. And Newer proposals are coming up, and our focus is on factory-based topologies. Like this, uh, there are papers which where they talk about multi-dimensional structures. So, and this is one called the VL2 or Portland. Which these are factory-based things. And so here we have these are the top of the rack switches. These are the servers. These are the aggregate switches, and then we have the intermediate switches. Typically, the bandwidth, the link, like the each of these servers are connected to this top of the rack switches. They are of one Gbps. Links and and these links between the switches, the intermediate switches, aggregate switches, they are typically of 10 Gbps links. So, the focus of our study is the load balancing issues because that is key to utilizing the entire infrastructure. So, it has been observed that means the data traffic patterns are highly volatile. Like in a particular day, means thousands or like uh, like large number of distinct patterns are found. And they are unpredictable, like this, knowing the data for a certain interval of time doesn't allow us to predict the future data. So that's why means to deal with this random and volatile traffic, effective load balancing mechanism is something what we need. So the existing techniques, this is called VLB, the valiant load balancing. What it does is actually it means it randomly, like means if it has to send a message from node X to node Y, so it randomly selects any other node Z and then reflects it back to the node Y. So in this case, in this factory topology, what we have is aggregation switches and this intermediate switches, because each one is connected to each one of them. So utilizing the property of the factories, what we have is like means in the ascending phase, when the packet moves upwards, means you have so many choices, means and once you reach the topmost switches, you have route to the destination. So that's what is exploited in here. So once we reach the aggregation switches, we randomly choose one of the intermediate switch and then bounce it off to the other one. So that provides the load balancing that's the existing ones. So and that at present that is done at the flow level. By a flow, what we mean is a message from a source node and source port to a destination node to a destination port. So it's the association between the source and the destination. And like to obtain the optimal performance, the VLB must be applied at the packet level. But as of now, it's applied at the flow level. But like means the networks means, which use TCP-like network, means there what we have is like means if we use a packet-like, packet level VLB, the out of order packets means that actually creates a problem because the typical time to like reach from a source node to a destination node is in terms of microseconds. But like if the out of order packet problems Arise, then like TCP has to wait till the, all the packets are arrived, and then it can push it up to the application level. So the performance of VLB at the flow level is not clear. So that's what our focus was to try to find out means 
full spectra in terms of performance, the packet level VLB or the flow level VLB. So uh, that's our focus. Let us investigate the performance difference between the packet level and flow level, and if possible, propose some new load balancing techniques. So we did a simulation with we wrote a network simulator that simulated the TCP on the data center networks with the topology issue. And we assume that there is no packet loss in the network, and we assume that means there the packets arrive in order. And we use the packet latency as a performance metric. <coughs> For the traffic, we use two types of traffic. One is uniform and non-uniform. The uniform is like means each source and destination means they have equal probability of communicating. And for non-uniform traffic, what we have is we group the, all the servers in number of groups, and then they all communicate with each other. It's the auto of within the group. And the other parameters by which we, we measure things is the switch sizes, because um, one of the parameters, like the number of ports for in this switches, in this case, like each switch has eight ports. So these are the parameters we are varying. So and as the number of ports for the switch increases, the network size increases laterally. And the number of servers per rack, because this has an influence on the performance. And the switch to server and the server to switch bandwidth ratio. Typically what we said is like these are 1 Gbps links, these are 10 Gbps links. So we vary those ratio and try to find which who is better in terms of performance. And we vary even the message size. So typically what we find is for uniform traffic, means where we have equal probability of like nodes communicating, we find that there's a flow level VLB and the back level VLB, they perform almost similar. Like this is a curve, it's, it's not very clear, but uh, the performance is very similar. But there is a marked difference when we go to the non-income traffic. So there we see that packet level VLB outperforms flow level VLB, and the improvement grows with the increase in the number of switchboards. But then, like when we increase the number of switchboards, it grows laterally, and the packet level VLB actually, means that each packet gets more number of options to get routed to the destination. So that's why I meant there is one improvement, and then we see that the improvement grows with the max sizes. Because with the flow level VLB, what happens is like if a uh, few big messages means they get congested, so everyone is going to use the same link, and the congestion cannot be removed until the complete ma message is transferred. But in packet level VLB, it means they are broken into packet, and each one traverses its own path. And one more thing is like improvement is big if the bandwidth ratio is small. So these, and those are the key observations. So based on that, means what we find is if we can propose some kind of better load balancing mechanism. So one is the queuing by adaptive routing. So at every phase, like as, while ascending up the tree, we check means which of the switches has the, lo the least number of queues. I mean, the, the, the queue link is means it has the least. So we choose that link. And that's how means we keep ascending up till the topmost switch. And then the other one is the probe-based adaptive routing. Means at the initial connection setup phase, we shoot out few probe packets. And the, the packet which uh, and the, uh, the destination node is supposed to give back acknowledgments. So whichever takes the least time, that path is chosen. So these are the two adaptive schemes that we use. And we, a key observation that we find is within these two schemes, the performance between these two adaptive schemes is very much similar. But there is a difference when it comes to the adaptive scheme with respect to the flow level VLB. So this is one example where we, it's like, with the number of switch ports, the improvement percentage is like 4% and it remains pretty constant. And for the bandwidth ratio, like this, we have that means with the lower bandwidth, means we get a big improvement percentage, but it takes us down as we increase the bandwidth ratio. And this gives a snapshot of like means comparing all the three. We know that means the probe based and the adaptive, because both the adaptive schemes they perform similar, so we just took one of them as a representative. So the full flow level thing is, is that's the top one. So that's how we find that means nobody beats the packet level VLB. So the thing is, we cannot deploy the packet level VLB in data center networks because of the overheads involved. But applying the VLB at the flow level has certain problems that we saw. 
So in general, means we can say that Flowers VLB based approach cannot achieve the same performance as packet based VLB. So the question is, can we reduce the granularity of the VLB to something between low level and packet level? And the answer is yes. And that's what we are currently working on. So it's been also that messages are typically sent by host adapters in bursts of packet. Like it sends two packets and waits for a time, then sends another bunch of packets. So the thing is, if the time gap between the bursts is sufficiently large, then routing the next burst with a different route does not impose the um, problem of out of order packets. So that's what we exploit in this case. So we call that as flowlet. So flowlet can be thought of as a group of bursts with inter-packet time less than a threshold. And the complete flow is then that can be imagined as a combination of flowlets, and each flowlet is separated by a time, which is a big threshold time. So, and we, uh, we did some initial experiments with the flowlet balancing, and that shows some good advantage in terms of performance, but we are like, still working on it, and we are yet to get into further more experiments. That's it. Questions? So, both the both the two adaptive ones that you had set, had set up in the original part, those were existing algorithms that people had applied before, yes. or those were, and then this, the new one that is your current work? Yes, uh, even these schemes, the Q-Link based on the program, they are actually used in the high performance computing okay. So data center is uh, somewhat different from HPC, but they are very, like, at a very fast pace, they are merging. So, I, oh. Um, I noticed um, you mentioned that uh, you're s using a simulator to actually try these out, and um, I assume that simulator is some kind of sort of, I guess you can specify the configuration of the actual data center. It's pretty recent, but I was just wondering, have you had a look at some of this, uh, I guess the Facebook data centers? Facebook has open sourced their data center structure, and, and, and if not, do you, know, do you think, I mean, is this configurable to where you could actually simulate a different kind of data center structure? Okay, so you have a, your data centers can be structured in many different ways in how they layer their machines, and I guess you have a simulator that's giving you information. I assume it conf it it maps these machines or it simulates these machines' configuration. Yeah. So it turns out, I mean, I guess you know, there's there's other configurations, and and Facebook, for example, has released has open sourced their configuration for their data centers. Um, can you implement that in yes. this yes. particular simulator? Yes. Okay. Like, you mean the topology, like right. the, uh, the configuration of the internet? Right, yeah, right. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. I mean, what, what are you using right now? We, we are writing our own simulator. We have written no, but what, what's the configuration? Just something. Okay. I mean, I so saw. That was early the present on. Right. It was early on that you mentioned that you're using. The, right. This is the configuration. Right. That we have. And this is just standard. Yeah, okay. Um, I think I kind of missed it or didn't really understand why is it that packet level it seems like packet level VLB requires less state to implement right so it should be really simple yeah. than flow and flow level so why why again wasn't packet level VLB used when it's clear because in, in DCP means they like they buffer the packet still everything is in order uh -huh. so is it because of ordering packet yeah order? it's an ordering it's issue in, in a data center like if you think of Ethernet frame like 15 and bytes so it takes like a, just a microsecond. Uh -huh. But if it has to wait, and the, uh, what's that called? The retransmission, uh, the timeout value in data center is something around 40 milliseconds. Uh -huh. So like means to wait and like if some packets get dropped, right. then you have to wait for 40 milliseconds. But whereas a packet transition time is something around a few microseconds. Right. But that's why in, it's a, in yours, there's no, there's no packet loss, but there's just contention for, right. for reordering. Right. right. So, it would perform worse than the simulation physically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's why I miss our simulator actually didn't do the packet reordering thing. So we yeah. assumed that it, even the Q-link miss, we assumed that it's infinite. Right. Yeah. Is it back for another question? Sure. Can you go back to the slide which talks about the algorithms, the mechanics? 
Could you can you tell me how exactly the queue length thing works? You said you checked at different levels, right? Right. So how expensive is that? It seems pretty expensive when you're checking at multiple levels. Yeah, that's true. Means any adaptive routing is whenever you deploy any adaptive routing, it has to have some extra overriding processing like this choosing or oh, which one is the least. Yeah, so do you have any ideas on optimizing that? Because if you're going to check at that many levels, it's definitely going to be very expensive. It should not because the number of typical, it has to process, means it has to check means the half the number of ports. So checking half the number of ports is not that expensive unless we go for say 128 Ports, yeah, I mean, if you design an algorithm, you have to look at a much bigger computer. So, uh, typically, the switches means they have like means, means the highest order of switches means they have 128 ports as of now. Okay. So it's not more than so that. So you check half, you're checking 64 switches, yeah. Yeah. and that's not expensive. I mean, I don't know the networking uh, uh, expensive order, but it's just that when you say you check it at every level, it seems expensive. But if you say it's not, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's give our presenter a hand.